This podcast is part of the Shareable Podcast Network. Learn more at shareable.fm. Not every guest takes me up on the opportunity, but I like to do a segment called The Mic Swap, where I make my guest into the host, and then I become the guest. I let them take the conversation wherever they want to take it, ask me whatever they want, and uh, it's a lot of fun, I think. This is Mic Swap. All right, here we go. What's up, everyone? This is Jeff Harry with Rediscover Your Play, and this is the Shareable Podcast. My podcast. This is my podcast, and we're about to do, about to get into it. So listen, you might know Jeff Gipper, but do you really know this dude? So I'm going to ask him the hard questions that he may not be ready for. So we're going to get into this. Jeff, are you ready? I feel like I'm ready, but now I'm a little nervous. Elizabeth Gilbert says this quote that I just love um, where she says personal transformation doesn't happen and get until you get tired of your own bullshit. What is some old BS story you used to tell yourself that you had to get over? Um, In order to transform. Yeah. I, uh, I really thought that I was, I want to, I have to say this the proper way. So it doesn't sound the way I don't want it to say, which is that I thought I was really average for a very long time. Mm. Not that there's anything wrong with being an average person. Mm -hmm. It's just that like, what happened was, is that throughout school, school trained me to believe that I was a C or a B, B plus sometimes, because that's where I got all of my understanding of who I was and where my value was in society for a very long time throughout schooling, which is, I thought I was just a, I wasn't particularly smart. I wasn't particularly good at things. I wasn't particularly remarkable or extraordinary at anything. And I think that everybody is extraordinary at something. And I think it, so it's not so much that I believe that I was average and there's such a thing as an average. It's that I think it didn't cultivate in me the idea that I had something remarkable to offer. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I got into about my thirties, honestly, Mm. it's a long, long time. Uh, early thirties that I realized like, I'm actually pretty smart and I'm pretty good at certain things. And I have a lot to offer in these unique areas. And it's, it was when I was trying to fit myself into a box that was not my box, how I learn, how I think, how I communicate, any of those different things. When I realized I didn't have to be that, that's when I started to realize that I could actually embrace the gifts that I have Mm. and use them to try and make the world a better place and to be happier as a person. And, you know, to have the kind of life that I want, all those sorts of things were a product of prior to that, believing that I didn't deserve that because I wasn't good enough at this and I wasn't remarkable. And so that, that was the story I told myself for a very long time. And once I got rid of that and believe that I could actually do things and do extraordinary things, I actually started to do it. And what was the first extraordinary thing where you were like, oh, dude, I'm actually pretty dope. <laughs> so I, I tell a story a lot about um, my MBA. So I, when I went back to school, I got my MBA and I was horribly out of place for the majority of the time that I was there, at least the first half. Yeah. It was all accounting classes, all finance, all economics. Yeah. It was all stuff that like was just not in my sweet spot. And I was like, here we go again. Yep. I'm out of place. I'm not good at school. I'm not smart. And we had a class called organizational behavior, which was mm-hmm. about sort of like, you know, people and such. But that, that part would come later. The, the point was we had to give a presentation. And it was at that point that was one of the first times where I saw people who were incredibly smart, who, who I had to ask for help all the time, turn pale wow. and turn to me and say, can you do the presentation? Wow. And I was like, I mean, yeah, like, why wouldn't I be able to? And like, they're like, great. Okay, good. Great. (laughs) I don't really like talking in front of people and like, you're the creative one. And I was like, I'm what now? So like, like it was whole. wait a minute. There are different kinds of people that provide different types of value. Yeah. And they're not, there's not a hierarchy here because I think that's the other thing is when I got there being like, I thought like, oh, I'll go into marketing and maybe sales or something like that. 
but like it was all finance accounting and people mm -hmm. who were like, ah, oh, net present value of the company and sell the company. Mm -hmm. And I was like, great. So like, I'm just like the loser that wants to do marketing. Mm -hmm. And then when you realize like they can't do anything without us and they, and I can't do anything without them. Like the, it, there's, there's a symbiotic relationship there between all of us that we all have gifts and skills and we can help one another. And I realized, wow, I have a role. Interesting. Okay. So then going back to the, the BS story, what is a BS limiting belief story that you are currently telling yourself that's preventing you from going and expanding to the next level? Um, man, that's a really good question. Um, I think that there's probably somewhere in the back of my head, something that I continually wrestle with. Like I'm, I'm routinely, you know, getting in the octagon with this belief and, and having to like, you know, quiet it down. Mm. But it's the, the idea that no matter how hard I work, I'm never going to get over that hump. Right. Mm. They're like, so like I have a book coming out in January and the, the voice in my head is like, well, you know, 20 people are going to buy it. <laughs> you put all this time and nobody's going to care. Right. So there's, there's like a very, um, uh, defeatist sort of mindset in my mind that like, no matter mm. how hard I work on something, I'm never going. And, and here's the thing though, is that it's a moving goalpost. So mm. success is not a, a, an objective measure. It's a, no matter what happens, it's actually further out. You didn't quite get it mm -hmm. right. This morning I went to the gym and we were doing squats and mm -hmm. I lifted uh, I squatted the most that I've squatted with this trainer since like getting back into the gym. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about like, he was like, Oh, you know, savor that accomplishment. And I was like, listen, man, like I don't savor any accomplishments at the gym until I get home and actually make my way up the stairs. If I can get to that point, then maybe I'll like appreciate it a little bit, but even that I'll think to myself, oh, I probably could have done more. I probably could have added more. Mm. I, probably could. So it, the moving goalpost, I think the story that I'll never get there is a product of those moving goalposts, but it's yeah. also, it's also the story to me that like, there's not an accomplishment that is enough for me to appreciate it. Got it. So then if you were to tackle this story or break the story, what would you need to do? I think I would probably first need to recognize accomplishments. Like uh, actually, and, and I'll tell like you- How do you celebrate? Enough. Do you celebrate your accomplishments? Very, I celebrate others. I am a- Ah, a, 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 I do the same. Yeah. So like, well, we I love, out. love, love watching people grow. I love yes. watching people accomplish something. I am the cheerleader, like on another level for people, but for myself, everything gets like an 80% off discount. And I'll tell you, I actually just had the very first, I, I mentioned this to my wife, actually, I had one of my very, very first experiences of genuine feeling of accomplishment, like yeah. genuine unreserved. And it was, I, I just mentioned that I wrote a book and um, my editor just got back to me uh, the next round of revisions that were copy edits. Right. So like they went through, they cleaned up some grammar, this and that. And I had to read through it to like, kind of go through and, and just check all the different things. And I got up to about chapter seven and I looked at my wife and I was like, honestly, I don't know if I've ever been more genuinely proud of any work that I've Ooh. ever done than this book. I think it's a really, really great book. And I think that it's an important book. And P.S., you're going to love it. Uh, I'm going to send you a copy um, because it's called The Lovable Leader. And it's yeah. about bringing trust, respect, and kindness to work as a competitive yes. advantage in building teams. And I read through it and I, I got through chapter two and I was like, this book's really good. And then I got to chapter seven. And, and that's when I had the moment of like, for the longest time that that book was in my editor's hands, I had all of the that voice in my head saying like, oh, well you know, like you put your best into it, but like, it's going to be like a mediocre book. And like, really, if you think back to it, didn't you miss a lot of stuff that you wanted to put in there? And like, it's not complete and it's like really fluffy and it's all these things. And when I read through it, I was like, no, this is actually an excellent book. And it was legitimate. And like, even now, like saying that, tooting my own horn, like feeling good about it feels very awkward and yeah, it feels very vulnerable. uncomfortable it's and vulnerable, vulnerable yeah, right there. Not yeah. good with that. Um, but I am legitimately proud of it. And, and I think that that feeling, that very unique feeling that I had there was, I realized, I should probably feel that more because I said that to my wife and she was like, but you've done a lot of things, even since I've known you. And, yeah. then, and I was like, yeah, but like the, I had all the excuses of why that doesn't count. That thing doesn't count. Like running my own company and my own agency for seven years, that doesn't count because X, Y, Z. 
getting acquired by another agency. That doesn't count because X, Y, and Z. Any of the things I've done in my career don't count because X, Y, and Z. But this book was the first thing that was like, it counts. Interesting. Okay, so being that this is my cat podcast, this is the shareable podcast, everyone. Just in case you didn't know, we're in the shareable. Um, And uh, if you then were coaching yourself or a person like yourself, what advice would you give them about how they need to celebrate their accomplishments for? What, what would you tell them? So similar to a conversation that you and I had recently on my podcast, it's sort of like, how would you start play? Well, first you have to build the playground, right? Right. I would probably first tell myself to kind of build the playground that would allow me to right. even celebrate those. So I think here are the, the kind of two things that I think would, uh, would, would help with that. The first is to embrace vulnerability. Mm. Um, and that's being vulnerable with myself, being vulnerable with those who are close to me, who I think deserve for me to be able to say things that I feel uncomfortable saying. So mm. I think the vulnerability would be one, cause I know that like it's part of my Enneagram profile, it's part of who I am. It's part mm-hmm. of like how I've reacted to past traumas and things. I protect myself. I armor up. I don't vulnerable. Mm-hmm. So it's very, very that super hero arm up. Yep. yep. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's one of the reasons why superhero stories resonate with me is, mm-hmm. is that vulnerability piece in the superheroes as well as their yep. strength and how their strength sometimes comes from the vulnerability. Yes. But it, it always hits me in the feels and I get all choked up and then I can't talk. <laughs> so the first thing would be the vulnerability piece. The second thing would be to legitimately take more time for self-care and that would be a couple different things, which would be allowing myself time to relax and disconnect and like mm-hmm. in a non-guilty way. Right. right? So I, I think the reason why things like that are important is that I don't know if you can truly appreciate anything if immediately after you're done something, you're moving on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. You don't give your time, yourself time yeah. for a post-mortem where you look at what worked, what didn't work. And genuinely just say, hey, it may not have been perfect, but I did this thing and it's great. And then if you don't take the time also to give yourself relaxation to recharge so that you can charge back into the next big endeavor you're working on, it's really difficult. So the, the funny thing is that I feel like I, I can prescribe for myself the right things to do. Doesn't necessarily mean that I've had an easy time doing it, but right. I think I understand what needs to be done. And I think that's the first thing I would say is, work on the vulnerability and then indulge in self-care. Then I think the conditions are right to start saying, okay, now start taking stock of what you've done recently. Right. Celebrate the wins. So, so, so before I ask my last question, the, the question before that is then what step would you actually take if you could, now that you know, you already know, you already have the answers to the playground. What step will you take to actually explore this so that we're not just BSing about this, but we're actually doing something with it? Um, what are you willing to admit to? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like public, public accountability here. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I would say for one- And I'll do it with you. I'll do it with you. You do something, right. I'll do something. to make, I make that. it. I, you know, I feel like one that that uh, kind of uh, circumvents what I just said, which is I think it would be good to have somebody who I share accomplishments with. Right. You know, accountability buddies here like, hey, right. Jeff, what did you work on that you're proud of? Okay, I'll share something. In fact, this is actually something I've struggled with at companies I've been. There's been parts of like stand-up meetings where you start off with like something you're proud of or something yep. you've accomplished. And I'm like catatonic in this moment just fully catatonic. So I think developing the muscle for even remembering and acknowledging what I did uh-huh. would be a really good start um, because the I think the awareness probably comes first, right? Like yeah. you got to at least see that I did a thing to be able to acknowledge it and appreciate it. So 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 I guess the answer would be um uh for for the next for like the next- like I struggle with celebrating accomplishments too so we both can just all right we're both going to do something to okay, celebrate so here's what we're going to do for the next two months oh, two months dude oh my gosh now i'm getting nervous <laughs> so it, this it only works out to like eight because i'm going to say weekly okay. every week okay like on a friday wrap-up or on a monday you and i are going to text one another oh, an accomplishment let's go okay let's and, and go. here's the other caveat this is important i'm going to hold you accountable because it's on record yeah here. So on yeah. your podcast, it's on record. Yeah. As either of us share an accomplishment, the other one has to respond with some sort of a gif. 
Oh, what do you mean? Like some sort of an amazing animated GIF. Oh, like yeah, oh like, absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's yeah I mean, given. well, it, it has to be that's a given. Yeah. 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 So part of So uh, let me add on to this. Let I'm me piggyback. It. I hate to piggyback, but let me piggyback. So you, you we would text each other an accomplishment we did. And we would also say, how are we celebrating that accomplishment? And it doesn't have to be grandiose. It could just be like, I shared this with my wife. We had wine together. We watched Black Widow together. Like whatever the thing is, it could be small or big. We went to the beach, whatever you want to do. But it, ha- but you have to do something like this dope thing happened. And this is how I, I either am going to celebrate or I already have celebrated. I am going to piggyback on that. <laughs> so I, this is great. So, so much things. piggybacking. Uh, so I had a business coach who uh, taught me about a technique uh, known as mindstorming, where you write down 20 ideas for anything that you're doing, mm-hmm. and you immediately do like the top three or something. Yeah, sort of yeah. I think it's a Brian Tracy thing. So he always said that you have to do 20. And I was like, well, what if you can't come up with 20? And he had a phrase that he would say, I can't remember what it was. But he would, when he ran out of a thing, he would just put this phrase in whenever. So we had like a backup, right? So it could be like Laura Mipsum or whatever. So here's my, here's my piggyback offer. Uh-huh. If either of us cannot think of a way to celebrate it, uh-huh. we send each other a quick video of a silly dance that we are doing in that very moment. Yes. Yes. It's on the shareable podcast. That's what's happening here. Oh my goodness. It's, I love it. It's a this. real thing. This is a real thing. We're Double agreeing to it. this. We're shaking on. We're shaking. We're shaking on this. This is this is shakeable. This is the shakeable shareable podcast. <laughs> okay. Um. Last question, and this is a roundabout question. Just just follow me for a moment, right? Okay. And this is fascinating to me because I just found this out like a couple of months ago. So, are you familiar with the Maslow hierarchy of needs? Yes. So Maslow stole that. Yes, from <laughs> it's Native Americans, right? From the Blackfoot Nation. Yeah, but he so it's not that he so much like stole it, but he he reinterpreted it. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, as most people know, the Maslow hierarchy of needs, physiological needs are at the bottom, you know, self actualizations at the top, the Blackfoot nations like approach that triangle is not a triangle. It's an actual teepee and self actualizations at the bottom of the teepee. That's the first thing you have to do. Just like, how do how am I showing up in the world? How do I want to be? And how do I show up in the world? And what type of impact do I want to have, right? Above self-actualization is community actualization, which is like, how do I want to be as part of the community? And how are we showing up as a community and making the impact? So it's much yeah. more like unity driven and not just all about myself, like from a Western perspective. But then at the top, which is so fascinating, is something called cultural perpetuity which also means breath of life. Like what is, what is it that I'm taking from my ancestors and breathing into my existence? And then what am I passing on to like my future ancestors or my, the future people? Um, so then my question to you is, and this is gonna sound weird, but what advice would your ancestors people before you be giving you about right now? And then also what advice would your future ancestors also be giving you about right now? Okay, so Woo! I'm gonna be, that's an amazing question. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to be as charitable as I can with the ancestors thing. Cause when I tend to look historically, all I tend to see is like all of the awful things. Right, 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 of course. So I'm gonna be as, as charitable. So you're gonna with, be charitable, yeah, you're gonna ignore yeah, all I don't know the... what's in my lineage necessarily right. that I right. should be truly horrified by, but I'm gonna be as <laughs> charitable as possible and assume the sort of like, what are the the sort of universal lessons that I yeah the collective take? lessons yeah. that I I think it would be to uh, try to make the world a better place, stand up to evil, be willing to sacrifice yourself for the greater good. Like I think that somewhere in there, somewhere in my history, there's some of that, right? And what would they say about how you're doing it right now? I think that they would be. Uh, I mean, my entire everything at this point is about like, essentially I'm all in on nice, uh, on, on making the world a better, like the superhero Institute is about training superheroes coaches to be superheroes, uh, Institute certified so they can go out and make a difference in their own lives, continue to grow and unlock their potential, but also help the people that they coach to not just go through the motions or just get better at business, but to do it with a purpose, with a reason yeah. for impact in making the world 
uh, better, safer, kinder, and more equitable. So I'm all in on that. And, and even to the detriment of like, I know that I could go and make more money right. doing other things. And I know that, you know, there's other paths I could take. I'm on this path because I think, I think I only got one shot at this. I think right. that that's how I view life is like, you get one shot at this. So what's the story you're leaving behind, right? So this, this story of like ancestors and the stories and culturally passed down, like I, I want my family lineage to be a legendary line of superheroes. Mm-hmm. Like I want mythology. I want that we started with the idea that you can do work that you love and you can make the world a better place and you can watch out for other people. And I would want down, down the line, my ancestors to carry on this tradition of putting your heart and soul into your work and making your life about impact and making your life about the, the impact yes. you make on those around you, the community on the world, having hope that you can make things better. I mean, I, I yes. think that's one big thing for me is like when I look around and I read the news and I see like, it's just yep. a hopeless, disgusting, awful situation. And in spite of that, I think it's my job to look on the bright side and say like, what positive impact can I make? Even if it's a losing battle, I still should be in the fight to make it better. Mm. So I, I think so. So that's what your that's saying. what your ancestors. What about your future? The future people. What do you think they would be advice? Would they be giving to you? The future people. Uh, they would probably. You know, if I'm looking at Gen Z as sort yeah. of like the evolution of a lot of the things I think are inside of me, like mm-hmm. the values, but mm-hmm. they're like kind of more. They were brought up in an era where they're more. I think. Um, at the, at the end of the rope where they just have to live it that way. I think that my, my downline ancestors would tell me to just chill the hell out. Like they would probably uh. just tell me to like, stop taking everything so seriously and mm. being so wet, like appreciate the, I, I think I get very, time moves very quickly for me because I mm-hmm. feel like I'm very wrapped up in doing a lot of things and trying mm-hmm. to accomplish a lot. And I'm very anxious and impatient about impact and, doing big, important things that like, you know, it takes a lot for me to unwind on vacation. It takes a lot for me to Mm -hmm. enjoy playing video games sometimes. Like to just enjoy doing a thing is I think a little difficult and and hope, I guess I'm also being hopeful for the future that like people hopefully enjoy and relax and take their lives a little easier. Um, So again, I think if I look at like climate change and biodiversity collapse and all that stuff, maybe not like crap, we got to hurry up too. Right. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm being charitable in both directions of this. I think that's the thing is like, you both have to enjoy the moment, enjoy what's happening right now and also fight injustice while also being present in the moment. Like, yeah, it's the whole Adrian Marie Brown of pleasure activism of like, you have to find pleasure in the process yeah, and not just be the martyr that's constantly fighting against this like uphill battle yeah um, i know i said one last one but i have one last one i'm cool I, with I'm, it i'm imagining someone listening to this and they're about to start something that they're really scared of maybe like a podcast it's like mm-hmm. ah, i want to start this thing and they're just freaked out Dude, they're just freaked out about pursuing this thing. They want they li- they've been listening to your podcast for a really long period of time. Never have told you that they listen to your podcast, but they're really into it. Um, and they're just like, I want to be a superhero, but I just don't think that's realistic. I don't think that's doable. I just don't think I'm special the way in which Jeff talks about how people are special. But I also feel I can do something really impactful, but I don't know how to get there. What would you tell them? Oh, God, I would so like to talk to that person, first of all. So like, if that describes you, please do reach out to me, me at jeffgibbard.com. Um, but I guess I would say, why not you? Like, who told mm. you that you can't? Mm. What evidence do you have that you can't? And why do you even have to believe it if you have that evidence? Like, who says that that's true? Like there's absolutely no, you don't even have certainty that tomorrow is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Right? Like I've told this story. I, I don't know if you were there, but I've told the story a bunch of times about my mom. She got into a car accident on my last day of high school. She could have died. She survived, whatever. It all happened in an instant. She could have been dead. I think about that all the time. That's like mm-hmm. a trauma I carry with me my whole mm-hmm. life. And it's part of the reason why I am so like impatient about impact because mm-hmm. I don't know how much time I got left. Yep. And I think when you look at your life with this, lens of like you don't know when the end is like if you're if you have the opportunity to look back on your life how many regrets are you willing to actually indulge in 
versus how many things do you want to look back on and, and actually appreciate? Because I, I honestly think at the end, towards the end of my life, if I had the chance to look back on it, I think I would be proud of a lot of the things I've done. I just, it's like that sort of like, I'll sleep when I'm dead sort of thing. Yep. It's like, I feel like I'll, I'll appreciate the accomplishment later. And I think the same thing for this person that we've imagined listening is like, why not you? Why not now? Do you want to regret it? And like, just fucking go do it. <laughs> like, just yeah. go do it. There's no reason not to try it. If you fail, fine. People yes. fail at stuff. Like I failed at so many things. I might fail at this thing I'm doing now. Like who knows? But like, I'm enjoying the process. Um, and I think if you can find something to enjoy in the process, enjoy failing at something, enjoy learning, enjoy growing, just have fun with this journey because it's a ride, man. It's a, and it's a ride. And it's one ride. It's one, one ride. ride. Got one ticket. Enjoy the ride. Yeah. And I, and I, and I just tying this in is like, you know, I remember talking to a client once that was just like, yeah, I'm thinking about pursuing this thing and it's kind of woo woo and weird. I don't know if I can make money from it. Do you think, you know, do you think this is crazy for me to pursue this weird thing? And I was like, nah, you know, it's crazy working 50 weeks you know, for 50 hours a week, for 50 years, 2,500 hours a year, you know, times 50 for a company that just tosses you away at the end. That's weird. Like working all this time for somebody else and not creating the thing that makes you come most alive. And I will say this because we got to tie this back into the Avengers. You know, I want to go out like Iron Man, dude. You know, like that guy did everything so that when... You know, Pepper Potts comes up to him at the end and it's just like, and I'm in tears as I'm watching this. And she's like, you know, you can rest now. You've Dude, done you're it. Like, me. You're, you're, you're hitting me it. in the feels. Yeah. You've done enough. Dude, I bawled like, in the theater when that happened. Like all, he did everything. No regrets. No regrets. Left it all out in the field. That's how I would love to go. 100%. So this has been so awesome. I love this most. Oh, I'm so excited about what we just did. We shaked on this. Remember, we're celebrating our wins. This is also a challenge for you to also celebrate your wins. And also because this is so important, not only was this message potentially for you, but it was potentially for many others. So that's why it's important for this shareable co podcast for this to be shareable. Wait, don't leave. If you've never listened to my fancy outro, do it just once for me, please. Okay, if you enjoy shareable and you find it valuable, there's a few ways that you can support the show. One, you can share it on social media, which I strongly encourage. I mean, it's literally the name of the show, shareable. Two, you can review it on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're an Overcast user, as many of my listeners are, make sure to click that star button on the episodes that you like. The third way that you can support the show is by blogging about it or discussing it on your own podcast or even by making a YouTube video where you talk about one of the episodes. And then the final way that you can support the show is by supporting it directly on Patreon. You can find the link in the show notes. Now, before I let you go, I want to tell you about one other thing. You see, Shareable is just one of many projects that I'm working on at any given time. I've got another podcast called Rogue. I do a live streaming show every week called The Heroic Council. I've got a blog where I release a blog post twice a week. And if you're looking to keep up with all sorts of different content that can help you grow and become a superhero in life, I want you to check out jeffgibber.me. That's where I list all of my current projects and projects that are coming up in the future, including my forthcoming book, The Lovable Leader. It would mean a lot to me if you could go and check out some of the other things I've worked on because I put just as much of my heart into those projects as I do into Shareable. Thank you so much for being a listener. Thank you for being a supporter. And I hope to see you here on the next episode of Shareable.